us as black people, right, so-called black people, we are the children of Israel. The blacks, the Hispanics, and the Native Americans are the children of God, right? Now, I want to ask a question. What is, to you, sister, especially, and to you, sister, especially, what is value? How do you define value? Let's look that up real quick. What is value? I got it right here. You ain't got to look too far. Read the first definition of value. What is value to you? No understanding of what value is. What about you, sis? What is value? My brother, what is value? Value to me is things that are important. Things that are important, right? To you, what is value? So that's something that you value, right? Okay, all right. Let's read value. Value, the regard that something is held to, to, to deserve. You hear that? We place value on certain things. As a people, what do you think our value is? Do we have high value for ourselves or do our people have low value? Let's read that one more time. The regard that something is held to deserve, uh -huh. the, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. The importance, worth, or usefulness of something. See, our people today, you can just simply look at the conditions we're in, right? They've been taught to just have Jesus like you said, and then everything is all right. But what does that really mean? We don't know what that means. We have to be able to eloquently relay to our young daughters and our brothers and our sisters what that means. To have value is to have worth, right? Give me Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. We're going to go over the scriptures and we're going to examine ourselves to see if we have value or not. The things that we value and the things that we don't. Read. The book of Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her my people. My people. We read in the Bible that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are God's people. Yes, Here is telling God's people to come out of who? Read. Come out of her. My people. Come out of the ways of America. Read. That ye be not partakers of her sins. Because there's a judgment coming to this place. That's right. And they're seeing that these people are the midst of. And the Lord is trying to tell us don't be like them. Right? We have to understand what is value and what is not value so that we can actually walk how we are supposed to walk so we don't be judged. Okay? Now, Mary. Got a little more on that. Okay, read. That ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. For a very long time we've been taught to do what? Dress how we want to dress. We've been taught to lay down with whoever we want to lay down with. We've been taught to do any type of recreational drug that makes us feel good because it's affecting nobody but ourselves, right? That is a lie. We've been taught these doctrines living here in America after our slavery. The Lord said, come out of that. Come out of that mode of thinking. Let's go into marriage. My brother, my sister, y'all married? Are you two together? Y'all together, but y'all not married. Are you married? You have a, you a virgin? You got four kids? Where did we learn to do that? Where did we learn that that was okay? I'm sorry? Our parents. And it was taught to them by whom? This society. Come out of the ways of America. We're going to show you in the Bible. Read that. What we should be doing versus what we shouldn't be doing. The value we should place on our relationships, the value we should place on ourselves, because we are special. We are important. But it, it has been beaten out of us that we're not special, that we're not important. We look at each other and we think, that brother wants something from me. That sister wants something from me. If I don't watch my back and I don't move a certain way, they're going to get over on me. Why? Because we don't have any value. That value was beaten and stripped from us. Our high value that the Lord placed on us has been taken from us. We got to bring back the value which the Lord sees us as. We have value. We don't realize it though and we can't actually manifest that value because the Lord has it set up to where we can. But we're going to bring you back so that you can 
actually benefit from your value. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Read. Marriage is you, honorable in all. You hear that, brother? Marriage is honorable in all. Listen up. And the bed undefiled. In the bed undefiled, read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Whoremongers and adulterers. These people are people who haven't gotten married and are still committing fornication. And if they are married, they're still sleeping with people outside of their marriage. That's what an adulterer is. The Lord said he would do what to them? God will judge. Whoremongers. And adulterers, God will judge. If you're not married and you're laying with someone, the Lord said he's going to judge you. How do you think the Lord would judge a person who is not abiding by this rule, who is not taking heed to this value? How do you think he's going to judge them? We're going to get it in the book of Deuteronomy. This is how he's going to judge them. Because a lot of our people haven't been taught this, so y'all might be drawing blanks, and that's okay. But what I would like is, if y'all know the answer, raise your hand, and we're going we're gonna to dialogue if you don't. We're going to feed you the answer, all right? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 58. Read. If thou will not observe to do all the words of this law listen, that are written in up, this book, listen up. that thou mayest fear the glorious name, glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Read. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. You hear that? The Lord will make your plagues wonderful. Read. We gonna. What is a plague? What is a plague? Ah, right, yes, that's a plague. But when we're dealing sexual plagues, because remember, the Lord said if you're not married and you're out here sleeping around, man to man, woman to woman, or committing adultery, He's gonna plague you. How will He plague you? Or how will He judge you? Let's read. The, I will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed and great plagues, and of long continuous, continuous, and sore sickness. Is HIV a sore sickness? It's a plague, correct. My brother, is HIV a plague of long continuance? Is that something you can catch and then immediately get rid of? Read that again. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, even great Plagues. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues. What's the attribute of HIV? If you have HIV as a woman or as a man and you get a sister pregnant or you become pregnant with this virus, guess what you're going to do? You're going to run a very high risk of passing that on to your seed. Read. Even great plague of long continuance uh -huh. and sore sickness how long, and how of long, long continuance. How long has HIV been with us that we've known of since maybe the 80s? been a long time we haven't found a cure for it yet there's several treatments that can allow you to get over some of the symptoms of it but it's still here so long continuous that's a great plague that's one of the greatest plagues that our people feel catching but you're guaranteed to catch it if you disobey God read moreover he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt what thou hast afraid of all the diseases let's read and they shall cleave unto thee. Uh-huh. Also every sickness. Now that's the key right here. Read. And every plague. Uh -huh. Which is not written in the book of this law. Is syphilis written in the book of the law? I've read it a few times. No, I haven't seen sick, uh, syphilis. What about gonorrhea? Chlamydia? Or herpes? He said all those things. He would do what? Which is not written in the book of this law. Those are not written but what? Them will the Lord bring upon thee. That's how he's going to judge you. That's how he's going to judge adulterers and, and fornicators and those who say forget the laws of God. Those who say I do not need to be married. You understand that? You look like my uncle, brother. You need to listen to this. Hey, listen to it. Read. Until thou be destroyed. Did we finish that in our, our Revelations 18? Yep. Okay. You hear that, brother? So what is that saying? What after hearing that, how should you move from here on forward with your relationships? Because you understand that you believe in God. I see you got your sister. She got herself in order. She got her hair covered. You got your son. You've been listening. So to me, it looks like you believe in God, right? So how are you moving from here on out? Obadiah one and twenty-one. So you said. 
that you send up prayers to God and ask Him to show you the way. Help, help you on your journey? It is. It is a struggle out here. And it's a lot of people saying, do this and do that. This is the way or that's the way, right? Let's listen to God. The book of Obadiah, verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. So you ask the Lord for a savior. You ask the Lord to send me, in so many words, somebody who's going to show me the way. Christ came and he showed us the way already. So before you had that prayer, he had the answer for you already. This whole time the Lord been here. There's no coincidence why you're standing here right now. Right, read. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord. So listen, we are what you see as people who are understanding of what the Lord wants. The Lord called those saviors. Right? Give me that in Jeremiah 6, 6 and 15 if you could. The Lord calls us saviors. Right? Nothing to put ourselves on a pedestal. It's just that we know a way that is right. And then you have to follow. That's it. Why did you guys get divorced? Exodus 21, 10. Let's see what that says. The book of Exodus chapter 21 and verse 10. Read. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. What does that mean? There was a lack of, a lack of my duty and my marriage. So you wasn't teaching her. Because duty and marriage ain't just talking about sex. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.